in case you're watching this video because you can't sleep, I'm sure this is going to help. When I can't sleep, I like to go through some big physics problems. Some of those I've pushed around in my head for decades. And so here is my personal top 10 of physics paradoxes and unsolved problems, starting with 10 Boltzmann brains. The current theories of the universe say that in 10 to the 100 years or so, matter in the universe will be very thinly distributed and just clustered together by coincidence, like atoms moving around in a gas. But these theories also say that the universe will continue for an eternity and eternity is a very long time. In this time, it can happen just by chance that a few atoms assemble to a molecule. It's unlikely, but wait long enough and it will happen. Wait some more and you'll get a cell just by chance. Wait even more and you'll get an entire brain. In fact, your exact brain will appear at the end of the universe at some point, just by coincidence. And not just once, but infinitely often. What does this mean? I have no idea. 9. Why real numbers? According to physicists' best current theories, nature deep down is all quantum theory. Quantum theory is based on complex numbers, those with a real and an imaginary part that require using the square root of minus one. Yet for some reason, Everything we can observe is always a real number. I find this incredibly odd. Why is the observable world only based on real numbers? It's like quantum physics is locking away some part of physics from us. Is there a deeper reason for why this is so? Or does it just mean that there's part of reality which we haven't yet figured out how to observe? 8. The black hole information loss paradox. In quantum physics, information can't be destroyed. Yet, black holes seem to destroy it. If something falls into a black hole, it's gone for good. The only thing that comes out of the black hole is Hawking radiation, and that's completely random and contains no information besides its temperature. So what gives? Either quantum physics is wrong, or what we think about black holes is wrong. 7. Quantum gravity. One of the most famous consequences of quantum physics is that particles can be in two places at once. But what happens with their gravitational field? You'd think that if the particles in two places, then its gravitational field should do the same. But this can't happen in Einstein's theory. It just doesn't allow this. So either gravity doesn't have quantum properties or the gravitational field of particles that are in two places doesn't move together with the particles. Which is it? Six. The Fermi Paradox. Where are all the aliens? Why haven't we heard of them? One of the most amazing findings in the past decades in physics has been that planetary systems are much more common than anyone thought. At the same time, biochemists have also found that there are many ways to assemble molecules to autocatalytic cycles that are basically self-sustaining cycles that can result in systems that can reproduce. They're basically the building blocks of life. So why then haven't we heard from the aliens? Are we just too unremarkable because the universe is so full of life? Are they lurking around and observing us? Or are they waiting for us to develop the right technology and make contact first? 5. Complexity and Emergence This is very closely related to the previous one. It seems like complexity in the universe grows. We get more structures, reproducing structures, life reaction videos on YouTube. But just exactly what is complexity and why do the laws of nature give rise to it? Complexity is closely linked to emergence, the appearance of new features and functions. But in both cases, we have no good formal definition and no idea just why the universe would be the way that it is. I believe that solving this physics problem is a precondition for understanding consciousness. Four. The Grandfather Paradox. Einstein's theories of space and time allow for time travel. 
for example, through wormholes that go back in time. This is at least mathematically possible. But if such time travel were physically possible, it'd open the door to paradoxes like the infamous grandfather paradox. What if you go back in time and kill your grandfather, accidentally I hope, so that you're never born and can't go back in time? Just what exactly prevents this from happening? Or why is time travel not possible? Or is it and we just haven't figured out how? This question is closely related to 3. The error of time. The fundamental laws of nature that physicists have discovered so far work forward in time the same as backward in time. Yet in our everyday life, forward in time and backward in time can be clearly distinguished. Physicists will usually explain this is because for whatever reason our universe started out in a state of very low entropy and ever since then entropy has just increased. Increased. However, I don't think this explanation works because entropy itself is not cleanly defined. It always depends on arbitrary choices. Fundamentally, the entropy of the universe was zero at the beginning and it's still zero today. This means that entropy increase is just a different name we've given to the same observation, namely that time has a direction. Some have tried to explain it with the measurement process in quantum physics, but we don't understand how that works either, which brings me to 2. Schrödinger's cat. Erwin Schrödinger's thought experiment about the dead and alive cat illustrates an absurd consequence of quantum physics. It's that its effects don't stay confined to microscopic scales, but they'll inevitably spill over into the macroscopic range that we can observe every day. In Schrödinger's thought experiment, an atom that both decays and not, both releases a poison and not, which both kills the cat and does not. We don't observe this in reality, but why not? Clearly the quantum behavior goes away at some point, but what is it that makes it go away? Is it the size of the object, its mass? Is it, as Penrose suggests, the gravitational self-energy or something else entirely? And finally, my personal favorite one, the transporter paradox. That's the question of whether Kirk dies when he goes through the transporter. Yes, I think it's really a physics question. You see, according to physics, if you knew the positions of all the atoms in Kirk's body and their motion, you could scan that information, disassemble Kirk into atoms, beam them elsewhere and reassemble them in principle. Or, since atoms are all alike, why send the atoms? You can just send the information and reassemble Kirk from other atoms. But is this then the same Kirk? Or did you kill Kirk and now you have a copy? Quantum physics tells you that you can't make an exact copy of any state without destroying the original. But I think that doesn't really answer the question of what happens with Kirk. Like, internally, what's his experience? Does he die or not? I've been thinking about this for 30 years. Sleep well. But more seriously, science isn't just good for helping you fall asleep. I believe that scientific thinking is generally good for problem-solving skills. And the best place to systematically build up these skills is with Brilliant, who've been sponsoring this video. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. What you see here is from their newly updated maths courses. No matter how abstract the topic seems, Brilliant's courses have intuitive visualizations that really click into my brain. And Brilliant covers a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses, just what I'm interested in. And they're adding new courses each month. Sounds good? I hope it does. You can try Brilliant yourself for free and if you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina or scan the QR code you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and give it a try. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.